Good morning, beloved. This is your grace note for Wednesday, June the 24th, 2020. I want to share with you a scripture reading from Ephesians 4, verses 30 through chapter 5, 2. We've been talking about the Holy Spirit the last several weeks. So it says, Do not grieve the Spirit, the Holy Spirit of God, with which you were marked with a seal for the day of redemption. Put away from you all bitterness and wrath and anger and wrangling and slander together with all malice and be kind to one another, tender hearted, forgiving one another as God in Christ has forgiven you. And then it says, therefore, whenever scripture says therefore, it means now listen up. Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children and live in love. Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children and live in love. I showed you this book several weeks ago when our COVID experience started. Uh, it's a wonderful book. It's the history of Christianity and I'd seen a series on PBS, it's quite wonderful. But gosh, reading through it, look at this. I'm a little over halfway through. But it's been fascinating to look at the history of the church and to see how much conflict shaped the life of the church. Early on, the early church, even 300 years after Jesus's death and resurrection, they were still trying to sort through the various versions of Christianity. So when Constantine, the Roman emperor, uh, supposedly became a Christian, he called together all the bishops in councils to hammer out statements of faith, affirmations of faith, which we have. The Chalcedon, uh, the Chalcedon affirmation of faith and Nicaea, which we still have. Uh, the Apostles' Creed that we still have and we say. It was a, an attempt to bring about orthodoxy or what's termed right belief. But gosh, there was so much fighting about it. And once it was agreed to, Constantine enforced the mandate that the bishops had to go home and make their people believe in these creeds. And so if you didn't go home and do that, oftentimes uh, you were imprisoned and or killed. And even if you got home and your people didn't believe what was in the creed, then you risked violence or death uh, because of that. So the early several hundred years of the life of the church was forming belief, right belief, orthodoxy. And there was a whole lot of disagreement and struggle that went on. Phyllis Tickle uh, was the religious editor at Publishers Weekly, and she's written a wonderful book, and she says about every 500 years, the church goes through this. She calls it having a, a church garage sale, a house cleaning. There are times of upheaval uh, when the church has to adapt both its basic beliefs and its practices. Uh, the Protestant Reformation was one of those eras 500 years ago. And basically, they argued about the authority of the church, the practice in the Catholic Church of indulgences, but they also argued about the nature even of uh, the Lord's Supper and baptism. So great upheaval, and the whole church was unsettled, and there were even Catholic and Protestant wars that followed. So my point is, every several hundred years, the church has to adapt, has to reform. And Phyllis Tickle says we're in one of those eras. Another interesting part about it is that at several moments of being unsettled in doctrine, uh, orthodoxy, uh, and in terms of practice, which is called orthopraxy, 
um, the church uh, had to struggle with plagues. The presence and danger and death of plagues rerouted and reformed the life of the church. I think we're probably living in one of those eras. So a couple of interesting observations really quickly. Uh, in the Protestant Reformation in the 1500s, there was a series of plagues all the way from, say, about 1530 up through the 1550s and 70s. And in the midst of all of this disruption in church, all of this division and reforming of the church, something interesting happened. Lay persons, not priests, not pastors, not bishops, but lay persons focused on two things. Orthopraxy, right practice. The two things were devotional life and service in imitation of Christ. So our Grace Note message today is you can never go wrong by imitating Christ. In this time of our upheaval, of a plague, of the changing of the church, the structures of the church, the authority of the church, we can never go wrong by imitating Christ. Would you pray with me? God, we know that your Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Christ, lives in us, and we pray that you would allow it to guide our steps and our practices, our attitudes, and even our beliefs, so that as we follow Christ, the self-giving servant, and imitate him, we can never be off track in terms of your purposes and what you want to accomplish with your will. And so empower us with your Spirit in these days to be imitators of Christ. God bless you. We love you. We pray for you every day. And in these unsettled times of upheaval and even change uh, and adaptation for the church, let's fall back on what Christians have always fall, fallen back on, and that's imitation of Christ, devotion to Christ in our daily practices and devotion to Christ in our servanthood. God bless you. Grace and peace be to you, all of you. We'll see you soon.